So hi guys, this is EBP Band with Tablets for me, and today what we're going to do is do a, a in-depth comparison between the iPad Air, and this is the the full size iPad Air, and the Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1. This is the Wi-Fi version, not the Note with the stylus. And what we're going to do is going to take a look at, you know, the overall hardware um, pretty quickly, and then also go into just the differences in the operating system and why you would consider one versus the other. So starting out from a from pure hardware perspective, the you'll notice that the actual iPad has its um, home button located on the bottom of the screen. Here with the Samsung Galaxy tab you have the home button appears on the right hand on the screen or the left side depending on how you have the tablet rotated. You have no controls appearing here on the bottom. You do have some controls appearing here uh, on the side and and this let me just show you one thing about it. Let me turn this screen back on so that we can actually see the tablet itself. So <sighs> Having these, uh, the menu button here, and the, and then again the multitasking or the app shortcut button here that brings up all your apps could be a problem depending on if you're a righty or a lefty. Again, if we look at here the iPad, the iPad has it at the bottom, right? So it's not on the left and the side. And what I've noticed that that if I have my hand, if I hold it this way, I'm a righty, and I hold the tablet, I will inadvertently with the palm this part of my palm right here, I will press the the back button and exit programs unintentionally. So what I find myself doing is I find myself rotating it this way. And I do that, again, so that um, I, don't, uh, I don't back out of something. And you may say, well, hey, that works. The problem with doing that is that on the bottom here, now my headphone jack appears on the bottom. Now, I tend to like my headphone jack if I have wi a wired headphone coming out from the top. It may be an old habit. Uh, you may not care, but that's just one thing I just wanted to point out. So if you're a righty like I am and like navigating this way, you'll want to have your home button here with your, uh, with your back button and your menu button, right? And you'll want to hold it this way. If you're lefty, then what you'll end up is doing one of these things. And in this case, it works out pretty well, at least for me, because on the top, I have my uh, headphone jack. Uh, obviously, you have speakers on the top and on the bottom here. That's just one tip. When looking at the iPad, the iPad speakers are both found on the bottom, and you get stereo sound speakers. When you look here at the Samsung tab, your speakers are found on each side. So you have one here, and we have one here. So the benefit of that is that if you're watching a movie this way, and you're holding the tablet like I am, you're not covering up the speakers, right? So the sound, you're getting that the benefit of the sound on both sides. If you're using the iPad and you're holding it this way, like I just did there, uh, your hand is covering up the speakers. So you're not going to get the best sound if you're holding it. So I think for a landscape implementation, the Samsung has, um, has, it, has that part pretty well thought out. Now, we talked about um, some function buttons that we'll go uh, and look at right here. Uh, you have two buttons. You have a back button, and then you have a multitasking button. So let me show you. For the iPad, if I want to... Uh, let's say, for example, go into uh, go into another program. I can press the home button twice, and what I'll have is I can cycle through all the programs that I can have access to by pressing the home button twice. Here on the Samsung implementation, I press the multitasking button here, and what I do is I get all of the programs up here in the bottom. So one button, and I could do the, the same thing. I could, If I want to go to a specific program, let's say, for example, I'm going to go to the gallery, I just tap it, and then it'll take me to the gallery. Here, if I want to go, let's say, for example, uh, to, we'll just go to, this, to, to, a, to my browser. All I do is tap there, right? Now, the neat thing about the iPad is that if I want to go to a different application, the, the iPad has gestures that you can use uh, by touching the screen. The Samsung tablets don't. However, there are programs that you can install that will allow for gestures. But let me show you how the iPad works. By using these four fingers and swiping this way, let me do this again, Oops. you can you can go to the next program. See how I'm switching over and it's going to the next program so I can go to my inbox. If I swipe again, I can just swipe, go to Facebook, I can go to any application just by swiping over, just as I did right there. Um, over here, let's t 
turn this on again. I gotta change the timeout. Um, there's no swiping left or right. I can't do it. I can't do a four finger swipe. I can't swipe up. I can't swipe down. Those gestures don't exist. So the only way I can get out is by backing out or by pressing the home button, right? So that's a comparison and just on, on, on the actual navigation. Another aspect that is different about the tablets um, happens to do with the function of multi-windowing or really multi, uh, multi-application access. With the actual uh, iPad, I can only be in one application at a time. Like I showed you here, uh, if I were to be in this browser, I can only be in this browser. I can be in multiple tabs, but I can't be anywhere else. I can go into email. I can go into this area here, but I can't be in multiple uh, applications at the same time. Let me show you where, where Samsung excels in this area. Now, in order for this uh, function to work, you need to make sure that multi-window is enabled. It will be enabled by default, right? Uh, and what multi-window gives you the ability uh, to, to do is to have two applications running simultaneously. Remember over here on the iPad, you're limited to only one at a time. So if I, for example, swipe from left to right, oh, let me get out of that. If I swipe like this, I can bring up this menu. This menu is my multitasking menu. So what I could do is I can open up, uh, I can open up a picture. So let's say, for example, I can open up uh, my, my album. And what I could also do swipe over and I can open up Chrome. So I can have these two applications going on uh, simultaneously. So you can see that. The iPad cannot do that. The iPad will only allow you to be in one application at a time. You cannot have two applications running simultaneously. Now this is beneficial in, in, in several areas because this is one implementation of, of, of this function, right? The other thing you could do, and let me see I have this, these things right here. I'm going to flip it around so I don't do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up that menu again. What I could do is I can drag Chrome to the top. All right. Notice how it took the full screen. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gallery and I'm going to drag it down. Uh, the iPad can't do that. So I have my browser on the top and I have another application on the bottom. And I can swap between them. I can make one larger. I can make one smaller. Um, I could go back and forth. And you may ask, when would you do something like this? Well, all of us are looking at an email or you're looking at an attachment. And if you look, if this happened to be my email client, by tapping on the email attachment, the attachment would open up on the bottom. So if it's a picture, if it's a PowerPoint, if it's an Excel spreadsheet, if it's a Word document, you could look at the email and look at the attachment at the same time. On the iPad, you can only be in one or the other. You can't be in both. Now, I understand for those of you who are very familiar with the iPad, that if you're in an iPad email and there's a picture, you can see the picture inside of the email. You know, you could do the same thing inside of the email client with uh, from Google, or in this case with Samsung. But again, the versatility here is being able to be in two applications at the same time. And it's really not limited just to just two. You can have multiple applications open at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag another application here. I'm going to drag Dolphin Browser out and I'll put it on the bottom. And now what I have on the bottom is the Dolphin Browser. Well, what I could do here is I can actually carousel through the applications that I have open. So here is my gallery that's in the back. Let's do that again. That's Dolphin just kicked in. So I could go into the gallery if I wanted to. Yep, let's do that. That's a gallery back. And if I wanted to go back to the to Dolphin, I could do that as well. So not only can I have multiple applications open at the same time, I can have, you know, top and bottom, but I can have a series of applications in this kind of Rolodex style on the bottom and just switch between them. And there are a lot of neat functions here. Um, if you tap this this dot that you can actually swap between them. You could um, copy information from one or the other. You can uh, close it obviously or take it to a full screen. And that's something that the iPad just can't do. Now the other piece about the the tablets and what we'll do is we'll just get out of this. Let me uh, back out of that just so that they keep on exiting. We'll exit. So now they're gone. 
Uh, the other thing that's different about the tablet, and we'll, we'll get into the actual hardware uh, part of it, is the resolution. So our iPad has a resolution of 2048 by 1536. And, and that was considered, you know, a, a high resolution. Remember Apple would talk about it, it's higher resolution than even some of the television sets that are out on the market today, a lot of those LEDs that you have. Well, the Samsung Galaxy uh, series, the Pro series resolution is um, quite phenomenal. It's actually uh, 2560 by 1600. Uh, again, really high resolution screen. Uh, that also has a greater pixel density. So the actual, and, and I don't know if, if this will come out that well, but again, this is a Retina iPad, and what I want you to do is focus on uh, focus on the text. Notice notice the text on the App Store. Now that looks pretty clear, right? Let me show you now on the the text that appears on this tablet. Notice how crisper it is. How, and I'm going to try to focus in there. Notice how cleaner the edges are. Uh, again, is that a big deal? No, uh, I, I wouldn't say so. But it all depends on what you're looking for in a tablet. The higher resolution is going to give you better graphics. Uh, it's going to give you better video playback uh, when it comes to just the, the 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 graphics themselves. And then the other thing about just beyond the screen. Uh, the aspect ratio is a little bit different. You notice that this one's a little bit longer, right? And this one's more more square. So uh, that's a little different as well. Uh, the, from a processor, uh, this one processes information uh, supposedly based on the specs. Again, this is a octa-core processor, right? So it has two quad-core processors running at one running at 1.9, one running at 1.3. Uh, the iPad um, basically has uh, what is known as an A7 chip, um, right? That really isn't processing at the same speed as this processor has the capability to. However, um, it is said that you know it's a 64-bit architecture, which means that it could process more inf information. It could process information a lot faster. Matter of fact, both of these tablets, I would say, in my opinion, are overly, uh, the horsepower is overrated because the software themselves hasn't been really optimized to take advantage of it. But if you're into specs from a processor perspective, really the, the uh, Samsung, in my opinion, has the, the fastest processor. Uh, from a Wi-Fi perspective, um, it's going to work on your Wi-Fi networks. Both of them will. We'll look at some performance, how things perform, but they support um, all the standards that are out there, so you really don't have to worry about that. They both support you know, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum as well as the 5 gigahertz spe spectrum, and they both support Bluetooth technology. So you don't have to worry about those, uh, those aspects. If we were to look at the dimensions for a second, we'll put them side by side. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll do it this way. Uh, it's it's hard to tell, but from at least from the specs, the iPad is 0.29 inches, and the Samsung is 0.28 inches. So if you look at it, it's kind of hard to say that you can tell the difference, right? Because uh, it, it's not much of a difference there. From a height perspective, if we were to put it right here, let me put it in an angle. See that you can see, not quite much taller. The the Samsung tablet again, it's because of that that aspect ratio. It's a, it's a little bit taller than than what you see with the with the iPad. From a width perspective, um, they're pretty much the same. When I run my fingers, my hands flush on the sides, uh, you'll notice uh, that it's about the same, just slightly different. Here you have the iPad, and here you have the Samsung tablet, so you see it um, just a tad wider, but not 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 by much, right? Now, uh, another difference is uh, with these is that the iPad does not have a flash uh, with the camera. So the camera itself, um, in low light situations, if you're if you're the one of those people who like taking pictures uh, with the with the tablet, uh, in the low light situation, uh, you're not really going to get the best uh, picture. Uh, 